Well, I think the trial was uh, immensely important. Um, I think it demonstrated that there are um, Guatemalan um, prosecutors and judges who are willing to grapple seriously with the, uh, the crimes of the past. And they put on the, uh, the evidence that was necessary in order to um, establish, uh, I think, uh, beyond a reasonable doubt uh, that um, General Efrain Rios Montt uh, was responsible for the crime of genocide. Uh, they gave uh, victims um, an opportunity to, um, to have their say uh, in court, uh, to be subject to cross-examination, and nevertheless, to, um, uh, to be able to um, adhere uh, to their stories effectively and make them uh, persuasive. And even though the uh, Constitutional Court has um, annulled the, uh, the verdict, uh, I think the, uh, the verdict of history is in. Um, the, um, the responsibility of uh, General Rios Montt for genocide was firmly established. Genocide. Well, um, I think the charge of genocide um, was appropriate. Uh, that is, I do think that the, um, the killings did take place um, on ethnic grounds. The Ishil were identified by the military with the, um, the EGP, one of the, uh, the four guerrilla groups in Guatemala. Uh, and young children were killed as, as well as uh, adults. Uh, so it wasn't uh, just an attempt uh, to, um, to wipe out uh, combatants or um, potential combatants. Most of the, um, uh, the people who died uh, were killed execution style rather than um, in combat. Uh, and I think those are the, um, uh, the characteristics uh, which um, help to define the, uh, the crime of genocide. Um, I think it's important because um, we have come to regard genocide as the ultimate crime. Uh, there has not been a case previously in which um, a head of state or a former head of state was tried in a national court um, for the, uh, the crime of genocide. Uh, a head of government, uh, the former prime minister of uh, Rwanda, was convicted of genocide by uh, an international tribunal. But an international tribunal operates uh, in a way that is remote from the country, uh, whereas this took place um, within Guatemala, and I think the, um, the resonance of the case uh, within Guatemala is far greater uh, than if this had uh, taken place in an international tribunal. It, it means to me that um, it's uh, a major step in uh, what has been an ongoing struggle um, against uh, impunity. Uh, there was uh, a book published uh, a couple of years ago uh, which counted some 67 cases in which heads of state or heads of government uh, had been prosecuted between 1990 and 2009 either for human rights violations um, or for corruption or for a combination of the two. Now, of course, many of those did not result uh, in uh, convictions. But this was the most serious set of charges that was heard uh, in a national court for among the most serious set of crimes that was committed uh, during the, um, the post-World War II uh, period. And uh, as such, it's uh, an immense step in the direction of um, eroding that sense of impunity that um, former di or the dictators have had when they have been the authors of major crimes. Anybody who is in that position of power again 
has to think um, twice or three times or more uh, before engaging in this kind of criminality ever again. Uh, I, I imagine uh, that um, it is uh, immensely important uh, to them. One of the things that I learned in conducting human rights investigations uh, all over the world uh, is that everyone uh, who has been victimized um, by terrible abuses uh, of human rights wants the, uh, the story to be known that if the, uh, the story is um, suppressed, um, they feel doubly victimized, triply victimized by the fact that it is, it is suppressed, and that uh, accountability tends to matter uh, a great deal to the victims.